Well, good morning everyone, look at that. Nice blue skies today. And it's actually really, really nice. It seems like I put these videos up all the time and it's good weather at the moment, but it hasn't been. This rain gauge is pretty full. There is, there's just over 50 mils in there, which we had at the end of last week. Today is Monday and it was quite a bit of rain. Like we certainly didn't need it. Everything was saturated as it was. So it did cause a little bit of damage. I'm just doing my rounds this morning. So I'm about to move these girls, but the heifers are down. They're on the flat, so they're actually over there. They're next to be done, but they were just in that sort of corner break there. There's a little bit of high ground there. It's not too wet, but they sort of, from here you can see it, it's pretty dark. So they did make a little bit of a mess. And these girls also did too. They were up at Buck's place up the top there and they made a little bit of a mess, although I did sh shift them sort of in the afternoon, but it is what it is. Hopefully it sort of recovers all right. It should do, but yeah, I don't know. We don't like making mud, but it can't, can't be avoided sometimes. It's just yeah, a little bit hard, especially when you get sort of 50 mils in 24 hours. And I know a lot more people around the place got a lot more than we did. We we're actually quite lucky, I know, towards like the Kaimais. Some of those guys had up at, well, well over 100 mils, so yeah, that would have been pretty tricky. At least it's nice and warm today. It's actually really warm in that sun, which is which is beautiful. It's been pretty overcast as well for the last week, so growth rates haven't been probably what we were hoping them to be. So we are short of grass a little bit at the moment, but we're not due to start carving for about three weeks. It might be just under three weeks now. So hopefully we can get some more days like this and it'll sort of pick up the rates a little bit. This is the furthest away paddock on the farm. We call it Bucks 2 because that's Buck's house there, or Buck and Gail's house, and we actually lease this paddock and the next one off them. And the next one next door is called Bucks 1, and this one's called Bucks 2, so how original. But that's what we've named them. And the cows were in here, where they are now, there was one, two, three, four, five, five six so a week ago they were in this break a week ago and it's actually looking really good like it has uh it has grown quite a bit which is which is awesome to see there's a little bit of a mess over here though and i fed out a bale it didn't feed out real well but this is sort of oh, yuck silage too it wasn't very nice i don't think it'd be quite that bad there's another spot just there i had four bales like that but that one's been the worst and it was back from i think it was like in march i had a bit of grass or, or there was a paddock just over there that i sort of topped in the cows didn't eat much of it they left quite a bit behind so i actually got the rake in and bailed it up and there was a little bit of cow poo in the grass so obviously it's come through into the bale like that but three out of four were good so yeah it's just that one i don't i don't really blame the cows for not eating it, but they got most of it, they cleaned most of it up, which is good, but yeah, far out, must be, must be growing actually, look at that, paddock looks real good. Except for a couple of areas, and this is where we got a heap of rain that, that night, where I was saying we got that 50 mils, so they're all standing here, I got up real early, came and shifted them, but they've made a little bit of mess, so maybe I'll have to, I think it's just all cow poo, I don't know if that all sort of recover, might have to spread some seed around, and then this is where I shifted them into and it sort of rained all day and you can see they've sort of pugged it up quite bad. It looked a lot worse a couple of days ago. Look at that. Oh, there's a bit of damage there. Which is... It's not good to see. You don't really ideally want it, but... There wasn't a lot else I could do. It will recover a bit and you can see the grass is coming back, but... It'll just be a little bit rough here. It'll probably... Not being not a bad idea, I really like the idea that you guys have over in Ireland how you've got those tine cedars, like they're grass, do you call them grass harrows or grass tine harrows? And you put a seed box out the back. I know that Adrian off I Farm We Farm, he's got one and he actually messaged me a while back and said, get one of these instead of a drill, they work awesome. So something like this would be ideal for 
for that, I was actually trying to look at them, but they don't sell a heap of them over here, so they're a little bit hard to find. But it would be would be quite cool having something like that, and then you could just come in here in the spring and and just give it a bit of a top up. Or even like now, I guess if you're going to get a warm spell, you could do it so it germinates. Yeah, I don't know. Never used one, but would be a handy tool, and I do like the idea of it. Check out these fellas, though. The cows always share the paddock with these boys. These are a couple of pets. That's the son. He must be five. I'm pretty sure he was born when they moved up here. And then that's the that's the mum there. She's about 18. She's getting pretty old now, but he he would be jeepers, like well over a ton. He's huge. He's half Highland cattle, obviously. She's full Highland. And then he's half Eshire. Hey mister. I don't think he has a name. Really doesn't look too good on the gateway there, so most of that'll be stuffed. But maybe it might be probably could like sprinkle some seed around in a spreader and then bring the roller over behind the tractor and just sort of roll it in, see if you could roll it in, maybe. I don't know, maybe that'll work. It's pretty soft there, so possibly. But I thought having them up here, like it's a pretty flat paddock. They wouldn't make too much of a mess, but it's just because the ground's so wet. And there's a good example too. So that hedge, that's our boundary that runs up to the main road up there. And that paddock, that was a maize paddock of Calvin's. You can see how it's like quite dark green. There's that big patch of dark green and then how light it is. That'll just be from, from how wet it is. I don't even think he's grazed it yet. And then down, down the bottom here, these flats like there. Looking very yellow, those paddocks, but they hold a lot of water. You can see there's just water sitting in there now, so... Yeah, it's been an unusually, unusually wet year. Our annual rainfall here sits at about, or well, on average is about 1,250 mils, I think. Anywhere from about 12 to 1,400 heads. We must have had... Oh, maybe... We must have had nearly close to 1,000. I actually don't know. I don't know how I would find that out, but it would be interesting to know because... I don't know, it's a law of averages, isn't it? So it's got to equal out at some point, so it might be a might be a dry spring, which would actually be quite nice. As it's pretty obvious, I have just shifted these girls, these are the heifers. They're down here on the, the flats. I'm sort of eating this this country off through here because there's a few drains around and I want to eat it off before they carve because they can go somewhere a little bit nicer, nicer when they carve, a little bit safer for the calves as well. But unfortunately, I am on the lookout for one that has just carved. It has had a premature calf which hasn't survived, but I'll have to take her up to the shed and, and milk her. So that is <laughs> that. That's a bit of a bummer. <laughs> Milk one cow now for, for at least a couple of weeks. And it's a heifer. It's, it's not so bad when it's a cow, because they're used to going in the shed, but, but when it's a heifer, they, uh, they're not used to it. That one over there looks like she's bagged up a bit. The little dark one right there, but I don't think she... Well, she doesn't look that stoven in. So when they calve, and it wasn't a real small calf, they will look a bit shallow just behind or in front of the back leg there. See, she she doesn't. So I don't think, nah, nah, she isn't carved. It's not her. It usually is fairly obvious. She's empty, that one. Maybe something like this. See, she looks a little bit. Mm. Nah, nothing's really stood out so far. That little dark one again. She looks like she could be close though. I'm also looking for little telltale signs, like maybe a little blood on the tail or a little bit of ah, right there. Look at that, perfect. Bingo, got her. You can see she's a little bit dirty on this side too, so she's been lying down trying to carve. The afterburst, <laughs> the afterburst. Uh, a pretty big giveaway really, but we'll get her out now. I did give Dad a ring, see if he'd come down and, and give me a hand to get her back, but 
I'll draft her out now anyway, at least 34 you are. Come on. Oh, don't get down the other end of the paddock. I did set a race up, but might have put it in the wrong place. Come on. Just you. Oh, I'm not your mate. Well, I need a few more standards and uh, two hands for this one. Got her, so she can stay in here for for a little while. I'm not going to take her to the shed now. I'm going to have to come back and fence a, a race down the side of that fence. There is a race going up the hill there, but it's really steep at the top there and a little bit slippery, so I'm not going to take her up there. However, it is on my list. I really do want to sort of fill it in just in here. It's till about there. It's not so bad down there. It's just there's a lot of water runs through here and it's all clay on the bottom, so it gets quite slippery. All this, all this around here, this all needs sort of rock put on it. See, it's all clay. There used to be ash. I think they used to get ash from the the milk factory in town way back, and then spread it on the races, which was pretty good. Which was here, but it's not there anymore. But yeah, these seriously need work on. There's a little spot down down this race too, which which would be quite good to do too. There's only two paddocks that we get to down down this one, so. It's not quite so bad, and in the summertime it's fine. Like I said, it's just it's just when it rains, like now it gets quite slippery. It's never ending the things that I want to do. However, this tractor's down at the moment. There is a bit of a valve or something. I'm not sure what you call it. That goes on the end of here. That was actually it had like worn through to the O-ring and oil was coming out. So Dad's taking that to town. Hopefully they have a part on hand, but I can't imagine. They will, sometimes you never know, even like a second hand part would be, it'd be handy. Jeepers, I need to have a shave. It's not that I wanted to grow a beard, it's just I haven't wanted to shave. Get out now. That's handy though, look at that, dead rat. I went around yesterday and replaced all the bait in these bait stations because it had all disappeared since I baited it about a week ago. And we'll have a little look and see what it's like. See, even that's been nibbled at since last night, which is good. Making a dent in the rat population again. There was another dead one yesterday actually that Nell found. It was just sitting on the sitting on the yard there, so obviously it's starting to work, which is good to see. I'm gonna go and grab that heifer now. It's about time. I actually went and picked the kids up from daycare a little bit earlier, or two of them actually. Taylor's still in there with Holly, but they like it when I'm not milking, I don't have to shift cows in the afternoon, so they do ask if I can come and get them a little bit earlier, and there's no problem in that. I've brought my true test wand up though too, because I'm gonna try and give this heifer, I haven't given them their cow tag, so I'm gonna give her the tag, but I'm gonna scan it and do the operation through here. Actually, I just really wanna scan her through here to make sure that the EID tag matches her calf one. I'll explain a little bit more soon. They also don't really line up in here that well when there's only one of them because they can sort of turn around quite a bit. Whereas if you had a couple, you can sort of push them up tight, but we'll get there. Hopefully she's not too bad. She's actually going pretty good. She's not wanting to head back with her mates, which makes it easy for me. Bring her up nice and quietly. She has been to the shed a couple of times, so she definitely knows where she's going. Oh, don't go in there. I really thought that would have been all right. Come on, girl, you know not to go in there. There we go. Here's the tags. I wonder if there's number 34. Look at that. 32, 33, 35, and 36. So all these tags can go to these heifers. So like heifer number 49, it can have cow number 49. 
So I'll find her, uh, what did we say? She was 34. 233, 235. That one, that'll do. She can be that one. I'm all set, I've got the test bucket, shed set up. Need to turn on the milk pump though. Hopefully this starts. Did it? Very quiet. Oh, that's off. that would be why. That's better. Right, I think we're good to go now. Come on little girl, you've been in here before. No, I'm bringing the gate around. Oh, you're gonna go? Not that side. Here we go, have a look. Oh, good girl. That's it, put your head to the right. Oh, good girl. Well done. Put your bum around. That's it. Oh. You need to put your head up that way. That's it, bum around there. Just like that. See, this is what I mean. Oh, no. what sucks with only one. So much room for them to move. Alright, we'll have to try it again. Come on, you can go. Take two. That's it, come on. Get it, girl. That's it. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, put your head around. Come on, put your head around. Just like that. Hey. Come on, put a bit of water on there, eh? Put a peep, there we go. Not too bad so far, but see this? So this is the, oh, careful girl. See the white stuff that's coming out? That's the, the teat seal, and there now you can see the colostrum behind it. So we just squeeze it out of there, you know, get it out. It's protected the teat, done its job. And there it is down there. Look, looks fine. Now the hard part. Oh, hopefully it's not hard, eh? There you go. There you go. What's that? I oh, know. Hey. You can hear it coming through that. You might even be able to see it coming through in there. She won't give very much. That's it, you're nice and quiet, aren't you? Gotta be real sneaky and do your tail at the same time. That makes it very easy. If they were all like that, it would be it would be super easy. But yeah, she's she's nice and quiet. I think I do think it's from when we run them through. I reckon it just gets them used to the environment. So now I have Bluetoothed the one there to my phone, and I'm on Minder now. You see that little green bar up there? So that wand is connected to this. So I'll go and scan the heifer, and it should come up on my phone. So it says it is. 2134 which is correct so 21 is the year and then it's just here for 34 of that year so perfect that works you go add event uh assign haven't done this before through here oh tag animal here we go today's date yes enter that is the animal yes and then it's got a list of all the available tags so we'll go one four three is right there Delete this tagging, oh no, finish. Boom, easy as that. Right, female part of the inside. Oh. Oh. 
That's not good. The pin came out of the... Oh, the pin came out of the thing. That's just the pin that pushes the tag through. Came out with it. Maybe it wasn't in properly. There we go. She's all good to go. Although I would normally give her a drench, but we don't have any mixed up at the moment because we're sort of repairing the floor in the milk room there. So I might try if I can try and get something into her, just like a mineral drench tomorrow when I milk her then. She can go. I've been down there, I've set up a break for her, just the number one there. No, that's paddock number nine actually. <laughs> number one is right there, but she can go. And there, the gate's open. Please go through. Please go through. Nah. Damn. Oh, I know. There we go. Perfect. All these paddocks that are nice and handy to the cow shed, like that one, this one, the ones that are just there. And we use the tractor shed paddock, which is that one, because the tractor shed's up there. Well, we actually use that one because we put the new freshly carved cows in there. But all these other ones around, oh, and the one behind this, we use for cows like this, so they're nice and handy to the shed, doesn't take them long to get to. So these paddocks haven't been grey since we dried off, which was probably about six weeks ago now. She'll be sweet as in there now, she's got food, she's actually not that hungry. She had a good, good feed this morning. She's got a bit of water and all she really needs is a mate, but I hope, <laughs> I hope no, no other cows really really decide to drop, well, for at least another two weeks. Although cows don't like being by themselves, so if one did happen to, to carve early, it would be quite good if she did have a mate, especially a heifer. I suppose I better wash all this up and, and it's almost home time. She wouldn't have given a lot. Oh, look how yellow it is. That's good colostrum though. It might be a litre there, a litre and a half maybe. So it's not so much about quantity rather than quality. And she has carved a little bit earlier so you wouldn't be expecting her to give heaps. But she's doing well. Well, hey, look, it's pretty sort of black straight through there. It even looks like it's raining. They were talking about afternoon showers. Hopefully it sticks that way. <laughs> Blacker and blacker out there. Jeepers, not looking my chances. Dad's been over to Hamilton. He had to go over there to pick up the part we needed, which is on the bottom of that. Oh, right there, that part. And he actually borrowed it. I think he went to a scrap, maybe not a scrap metal, maybe like a secondhand tractor dealer who had one of these loaders sitting around. So he's borrowed it off him. We're going to take it back. I think he's actually ordered that part but it takes about three weeks to come in and guess how much it is it's like it's like this big it's it's i think he said it's 1100 bucks so that is that is unreal i know some things are expensive that you don't think are, are gonna be but i thought it might have been like a two three hundred dollar part but jeez that is unreal so the guy that's got the tractor or got this loader over there i'm not sure if it's the same one but maybe well, it has to be the same brand anyway, but we might ask and see how much the, the loader is and if it's going to be under, you know, 1100 bucks, which maybe it could be, we'll just buy the loader and we could use the parts off it for, for here, like if we do blow any hoses, which we seem to be doing at the moment. I know it's not good to replace like a blown hose with a second hand one, but I don't know, maybe it's worth it in that instance. Just, yeah, that's crazy, eh? Jeez, it feels like it's gonna rain any second. It's got like that feeling about it, which is absolutely gonna suck because everything's just gonna get wet again. Cows make a bit of a mess. Oh, it just seems to be just repeating and repeating at the moment. But that'll pretty much finish this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up like always. I guess you can say we have started carving. I don't know, it doesn't really feel like it, but then it doesn't feel like it's far away either, so. Ah, oh, time is ticking. So is that rain. Jesus, really don't need it. Thanks for watching, guys, and see you next time.